couple of things out of the way before we start proper. First of all, the video I'm covering is ridiculous, so I'm gonna be treating it as such. You say stupid things, and I'm gonna call you stupid. That's just how this works. Second, at no point is this a defense towards Disney. Their insidious hypocrisy and political whoring is well documented already. All their modern shit is horrid, they've made nothing even halfway decent since like... 2016. For all I care, Disney can go the way of the coyote and just walk off a cliff. That being said, there's no point inventing problems where there are none. Now that that's laid out nice and clear, let us begin. So there's this guy on the internet going by the name James Somerton, and he has troubles of epic proportions. No, it's not the dead creature on his head, nor the fact that he seems to be trapped in some kind of garish pink alternate dimension. No, 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 no. His greatest worry is the fact that Disney are a bunch of poo-poo heads for not putting enough gays in their shows and movies. Because when it comes to children's entertainment, there is nothing more important in terms of storytelling other than knowing which little children like to take dicks up their butt or which pair of girls like to slam their clams together. No, there's absolutely nothing storytelling wise that's more important. Not a single thing comes to mind. To be more precise, James's beef with Disney is his assertion that the House of Mouse apparently sneakily places obviously gay characters into their shows to culturally appropriate the alphabet soup people for maximum profit, I guess? And then turn their coats and say that no, no, there are no gays here, in an effort to attract the widest audience possible. He offers a few examples from Disney's recent catalog, and this ensemble left me utterly confused. Because I didn't notice any gay characters in these shows. There wasn't a single homosexual relationship, no confessions of affection, no one was even hinted at being gay. The only thing gay about any of these is that they all suck the big one. So what exactly is the problem? Where's the bait and switch? Well, luckily, the human mob hybrid is courteous enough to explain it all to us. Apparently, there are a myriad of obvious, unmistakable, irrefutable examples of exclusively gay behavior in all of these shows. So let's have a look. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm the problem. Maybe it isn't that obvious. Like, yes, I know I get flamed for reading queerness into things even when it's entirely appropriate. But come on, Sam and Bucky? Kind of obvious, right? So no, I'm not the problem. Are the producers really that oblivious? They must have seen it when they watched it because it's hard to watch some parts and take a straight reading away from it. Okay, off to a confusing start already. So a bit of tussle and tumble is automatically a sign of ants in the pants, is that it? Are you being serious here? Grow the fuck up. By that logic, these guys are gay, these guys are gay, and oh, these guys are definitely gay. Look, look, look! Mister, you better take your gay porn and walk right out of this bar. How can a straight person look at some of these plot elements character beats and coded language and say, Oh yeah, Bucky going into a complete tailspin over the loss of his perfectly platonic friend to whom he had become emotionally dependent upon in order to navigate shared trauma was absolutely a straight mood. So going through the stages of grief, anger being the most prominent in the show, while mourning a friend's death is gay to you. You know that straight people care about their friends too, right? You can have sympathy for your fellow men without wanting to insert your cock into them. Or is that just me? But throughout this adventure is the running plot of Sam and Bucky not really liking each other for some reason. And it's never really explained why. It is actually fully explained if you pay any attention. Sam and Bucky are at odds because of their grief and differing views on Steve's legacy. It's not a subtext, it's the crux of their character dynamic. As a media analyst, you are really bad at your job. Or you are purposefully ignoring facts to make the show fit your narrative. It's both, actually. 
a literal couples therapy session, a literal couples therapy session, a literal, a literal, a literal couples therapy session. Okay, so here's the thing. English is not my first language, as you may have noticed from my distinctly stiff and frosty Finnish accent. So it's kinda embarrassing that I have to act as an English tutor for you. Embarrassing for you, that is. See, the word literal means lacking metaphor or exaggeration. This scene here is not literally a couple's therapy session. Because for it to be literal, Bucky and Sam would have to be literally a couple. The term you are looking for is sort of, or kind of, or just stop speaking altogether if your native tongue proves this much to handle. People do not have to be lovers to be in therapy together. I doubt that all the people Sam was seeing during his time as a counselor were part of one big grand orgy harem. Or at least I hope that's not the case. There are the looks the touching and all the other normal rivals to lovers character beats. And as an example... You offer absolutely nothing. Come on, if there really is that much homoerotic touching packed into six hours, then you should be able to throw together at least a 10 second montage with careless whisper booming in the background. Sam and Bucky are no different from any other body film duo. By your standard, all of these pairs here are also secretly gay. I swear, you must be one of those morons who unironically think Samwise and Frodo wanna invade each other's Hobbiton. But you know, we can't talk about Falcon and the Winter Soldier being gay, because Anthony Mackie, who plays the titular Falcon, and then the second iteration of Captain America later on, said in an interview himself that the characters are not gay. A few moments later. When people try to argue in favor of Raya's gay leanings, they are met with corrections specifying that these are, in fact, straight things, and that lesbians are just reading too much into it. And even though the voice of Raya, Kelly Marie Tran, confirmed in interviews that her portrayal of Raya was intendedly gay, there is still a persistent wall of denial. Oh yeah, okay, sure, what fucking ever. So the actor's opinion is valid only when the Alphabet Collective decides it is. One set of rules for me, another set of rules for thee. It is rare to get hypocrisy so neatly packaged. And speaking of Raya and the last My Little Pony bender, Segway! On a first watch of Raya, I saw some cute chemistry between Raya and the antagonist Namari. I thought, sure it's there if you want to see it, but it could just be an instance of girls being friends. And then I listened to exactly what had just come out of my mouth. Oh my goodness, girls don't have friends. This must mean they love each other, herp derp because in spite of the aggressive gay flirting in Raya and the Last Dragon Example needed Aggressive flirting Anything at all I'm waiting Nothing Okay If you are talking about the pre-battle banter between the two would-be click ticklers Then I hate to break it to you But that's just a basic thing in action-adventure stories like this What? You think that Spider-Man wants to bone every single one of his villains? Just because he runs his mouth at them? I had been conditioned by society to just write it off as girl things. The permissibility of girls to be emotional and thus emotionally and physically close with each other has made it difficult for lesbians to exist in visible ways. Not that girls shouldn't be emotional, but there must be some lingering homophobia around to look at two girls holding hands and say BFFs before girlfriends. We really ought to look at lesbian erasure and get concerned for the future of queer representation that one day, maybe one day soon, our stories and expressions are going to be swallowed into an amoebus heap of, hey, it's actually straight after all media. I gotta level with you, but I've been conditioned by society too. Listen to this, it's gonna blow your mind. Holding hands is not necessarily a romantic interaction. Otherwise, we would be accusing every single parent of raping their children. Now this is just me, 
but I would like to keep hand-holding as a platonic sign of caring first, and if two ladies or gents wish to be more than friends whilst holding hands, then they are absolutely free to do so. But that doesn't suddenly make holding hands a gay thing. Here's an idea. If people wish to express their romantic affection in physical ways, then there's this thing called a kiss. It's when you and your partner press your lips together, share the sweetness and the warmth, maybe slip a bit of tongue in there. I know, sounds risque, I don't know, it's just an idea. It's usually seen as a kind of definitive sign of interest. Next up, we move on from alleged oyster munchers to alleged fish stick fencers. Now I got my wish, cause I know that I'm a gay fish, gay fish. Film YouTube was abuzz about how Disney had finally made a gay animated movie. Straight guys were excited to see Disney's version of Call Me By Your Name meets The Shape of Water. By the time the movie hit Disney+, Plus, I was half convinced they were actually going to do it. But no, they're just very good friends. Just a question for all the affirmed straight men watching this video now, all two of you. Is it gay to... Okay, so the movie was unabashedly blunt in its depiction of literally every gay man's gay experiences growing up gay. Yeah, no, fuck off. Gay people do not own basic human decency, companionship, brotherhood, being kids, horsing around, exploring the world, or nothing of the sort. Gays can do all of these things, same as straight people, it's just part of being human. Whatever you thought the movie was gonna be prior to seeing it is on you alone. No one promised a homo love story, so Disney not delivering is no reason for you to get your boxers in a twist. But Luca is, of course, an instance of a very clear-as-day gay experience whose literal climactic sequence was about showing your true colors. That once again meets a wall of straight people who say, yes, this is an absolutely heterosexual thing to experience. Yes, getting disowned, having your family threaten to send you away because you're curious, found family of misfits, etc., etc. Apparently that's all straight now. Because there is absolutely no other reason for any of those things to happen. Ever. Alphabet people are the only ones who face hardship, fight with their parents, are struggling to find their place in the world, or meet any kind of oppression. There has never been any other group of people in the history of this fucking planet to face persecution. OH WAIT! See? It can literally be a metaphor for anything. The point the movie is trying to make, poorly because it's a piece of crap flick but still, is that you shouldn't be a dick to people who are different. Any type of different. Sorry Alphabet Gang, but you do not own oppression. And there we have it folks. The full haul. All the things that are apparently super gay and cannot happen or apply to anyone unless they are gay. What a load of brain diarrhea. And that's not all. Where there's stupidity, there is also absurdity. And where there's absurdity, there's often also utter insanity. How about it? Are you in the mood for some bonus clips of insanity? Not that I really care if you are or not, it's all pre-recorded, you can't stop me. Let's roll! No GOD! No GOD PLEASE NO! 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 Together they have to combat a terrorist group who is... Fighting to assure that everyone is treated with dignity, fairness, and afforded the appropriate human rights. So, the bad guys are a multinational team headed by a mixed-race woman of color who are fighting for the people who didn't get snapped. See, following the snap, or the blip as it's called, half of the population disappeared. 
And they're the bad guys. Uh-huh. It's so nice of them to afford all these innocent people the dignity of death, the fairness of stealing them away from their loved ones, while completely ignoring the basic human right of, you know, not being dead. Yes, the Flag Smashers are villains, you fucking idiot. Yeah, it's not a great look for a guy spangled in the American flag to be fighting against the impoverished of the world who are just trying to organize and be heard by the global powers. No, please don't stop the murderous lunatics. You guys, come on, they just wanna be heard. Especially when one of the last shots of the show was a bunch of people of color being murdered by a white guy with absolutely no repercussions. <laughs> Oh, you fucking baby, you absolute fucking... <laughs> oh, oh, you are trying so hard. You are really trying to make this about race. You fucking muppet. There are no repercussions because he was smart enough to not get caught. Either that, or it's just another example of authorities being represented as incompetent, as is par for the course for Marvel. If there were any leads, he would no doubt be detained and given proper punishment. Fuck's sake. The evil white guy in question would have murdered the terrorists all the same no matter what their skin color is. What is it about this show? I swear, half the people talking about this dumpster fire have the exact same skewed view of justice. Mental illness is a fucking epidemic. Why does our bisexual Loki only get a one-line vagary about princes? And no, nobody's asking for Tom Hiddleston to have a full-on contact sex scene. Loki is neither the place for that, nor would any Marvel movie benefit from a sex scene. And sure, we can still have the Loki-Sylvie love plot, but like, some more significant reference to bisexuality would be more appreciated. Okay, so I truly want to make clear to all you guys what was just said. Loki is mentioned as being bi, but that's not good enough. But also explicit sexual contact would be a no-go. So what the hell does he want? The sexuality of character shouldn't be their defining character trait. If it's mentioned, then it's mentioned. And if it's not, then that's fine too. Making a character to be all about their humping preferences is the epitome of tokenizing. Oh, and also, Loki is bad because there's not enough bi content but the deviant multi-dimensional incest love story is A-OK. -okay. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the Fuck Is This Shit Productions is proud to present to you a very special episode of The Ramblings of the Lifestyle Victim. When we flock to Twitter and talk about how this coded media represents us, why are straight people so willing to stick up their noses and tell us that we're obviously mistaken? Like, representation gaslighting. You can call the Earth flat, even though it isn't. That's on you and your twisted worldview. Just be prepared for rational people to come along and say, actually no, there's nothing that supports your claims, you are making stuff up. That's how discourse works. Welcome to the real world. We literally lived these experiences. Why are we being told that we're mistaken when we acknowledge our own lived experiences being depicted either literally or allegorically? None of the examples you've given are experiences exclusive to alphabet people. They are just human experiences. Just because you relate to something that a straight character does, it does not turn them into a gay character. Imagine that! Being able to relate to people who aren't exactly like you. It's almost as if representation is all a bunch of horse shit. No wonder the gays have anxiety disorders. Look at all the overanalyzing we're forced to do. Who? Who is forcing you? Who is holding a gun to your head and forcing you to overanalyze anything? No one. Get the fuck over yourself, you overdramatic limp dick weasel shit. And now we're at the point where somehow the straights think that these queer experiences are actually part of the straight experience? 
no, we are at the point where delusional bundles of sticks think that just plain old life experiences are somehow exclusively gay experiences. Like on one hand, yes, dismantling toxic masculinity means making it acceptable for two straight men to be emotionally intimate with each other. But on the other hand, there is a bi or homophobic reading of that where a dude's masculinity is tough enough to be emotional with bros, but still fragile enough not to bite the bullet and just, you know. And my reading of that is that there's absolutely no point trying to appease ideologues, because they will never be happy. They will always keep complaining, no matter what. Because it is not about making any kind of progress, it's about playing the victim card for all eternity. Thanks for outing yourself for what you truly are. Let's make no mistake, the lacking alphabet soup presence is not the problem with Disney's products. The issue is that they are fucking horrid stories, pure and simple. No one in their right mind would even wish to be represented in any of these. Talk about actual problems, or shut the fuck up. Don't dilute the discussion by making up self-centered bullshit. In general, this whole conversation about representation and the like is one big joke. If the dumbasses of the progressive circle truly cared about the shit that they bitch about, they'd be buying and promoting and celebrating all the fully alphabet soup oriented media currently available. The sales of mainstream comic books, for example, wouldn't be going down the shitter, that's a fucking certainty. Meanwhile, it's absolutely ridiculous to cry and moan about a company not delivering something they never even promised. But then again, the Oppression Olympics don't look kindly on people who are rational. People like this are pathetic. These fucked in the brain, fucked in the soul, absolute muppets. They are so convinced that they are special and unique and that their life experiences are so much more meaningful than the basic plebeians around them that they are actively trying to hoard ubiquitous human interactions as theirs alone. Not only that. But to them, everything has a hidden agenda, to the point that even basic platonic interactions have ceased to exist. These people are basically the same kind of fuckwits as those dudes who think that when the cute waitress smiles at you while taking your order at a restaurant, it means they wanna sleep with you. These utter fuck nuggets have abandoned reality. And just so you know, if the greatest worry in your life is whether or not a pair of animated children wanna suck each other's fish sticks, then that means you are living a hugely privileged life, free of any type of true struggle. Go fuck yourself. <laughs>